a NASCAR fan. Did you know that there is a NASCAR driver that proclaims Jesus as his savior and brings the gospel to the racetrack? His name is Matt DiBenedetto, and today we're going to interview him on this episode of In the Water podcast. Now, Matt actually had his own podcast for a while, and I think this one's inspiring him to pick it back up. Because everywhere that we can proclaim the word of God and the gospel is an opportunity to save someone's lives. Today we're going to be talking about Matt's faith and how it plays in his NASCAR career. If his NASCAR schedule would not clash with my baptism revival schedule, we would have already done an event together. But seeing as he is usually on the race car track every weekend, it has been hard to link up and make that happen. Nevertheless, where there's a will, there's a way, and I know that one day he is going to be serving the Lord in the water, in baptism, alongside me. But until then, let's listen to this podcast and see what all Matt Benedetto has to say about the Lord. In other news, thank you for blowing up this podcast. Thank you for the support of In the Water, a KG ministry podcast. It is going so well, and I cannot wait to bring more people and more talks of Jesus to you through all podcast platforms as well as YouTube. I'll meet you in the water soon. Thank you so much for joining our podcast. I am so excited to be here today with, with Matt DiVendito. And we're just excited to talk about your faith and your career and just how you incorporate both of those together. So if you don't mind, I'm going to start off with a prayer. Absolutely. Okay. Ready? Yes. Lord, we just thank you so much for being here. We thank you that you are going to guide this entire thing. Just Holy Spirit, come and, and take over this entire podcast and just help us with our words. Help us with however we need to glorify you. And Lord, we just thank you for our platforms, for being able to inspire people and point them to you. We just ask that this whole conversation is just anointed and that all the things that we say will help another person. We ask that by the end of this, that someone starts thinking even more about you, Lord, and that they just have a spark that's put into them today as we discuss you and we talk about our faith and how we bring faith into everything we do. So Lord, just guide us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So oh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I uh, drive in circles for a living, so I'm <laughs> blessed to have a very good job. <laughs> that's for sure. I've been doing it my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short, my family, um, you know, I, I'm a first generation racer. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just riding four wheelers and dirt bikes as a kid. And my parents passed by NASCAR on the TV. And that's what got me kind of hooked immediately. So I was a gearhead uh, from the time that I was a kid. And um, yeah, and, and long story short, it's been a crazy journey moving across country from California to North Carolina to be, I say we were, we were naive or crazy enough um, to, talking about faith. You know, this is before I was born again and, you know, gave my life to Christ. But we, you know, we all have faith and put our faith in, um, in, in something on a daily and constant basis. And we had that, you know, uh, us the Benedettos are stubborn. So we had that like stubborn faith of like, we're going to do this and we're going to make it happen. And we moved across country and uh, we were all in, in, um, you know, pursuing this. And when we got to North Carolina, it was like kind of a shock, you know, like a musician moving to Nashville. Yes. Like when you realize, oh, wow, you know, we're really in the thick of this. What did we just tackle? And, um, and so anyways, I've just through a, a long, crazy journey, um, you know, been able to make it into the uh you know the highest ranks of nascar raced in the cup series for um from 2015 you know the big race on sundays from 2015 to 2021 um i was in the the craftsman truck series for 22 and 23 and now i'm in the uh nascar xfinity series which is the show that's typically on saturdays um so i've been in the nascar the sport of nascar for um since uh my first year and the Xfinity series was 2009. So I've been in NASCAR uh, for a long time. And then, you know, kind of fast forwarding, it wasn't until um, it was uh, 2021 uh, when I had kind of had, a, you know, a true encounter with mm -hmm. God and was seeking him with all my heart. And um, then I, I surrendered my life to him at about midnight in my living room hey, uh, one night after we had raced at 
um, at Dover in Delaware. And that's when I, you know, realized I'd been born again and truly, you know, God's spirit, Holy Spirit just came over me. Um, and I, you know, it was like, I'd say it was like handing the race car keys over and surrendering, <laughs> giving that race car, you know, handing the keys over uh, completely and surrender my life to Christ. And it's, uh, you know, definitely never been the same since. Whenever you started, you must have been really young. I started racing in general in, um, when I was, I'm 33 now, uh, when I was uh, seven years old, I started racing wow. go-karts on dirt out in California. And we moved across country when um, I was 13, really by encouragement of other people, actually. A lot of other people just, you know, we were winning, winning all championships, races and everything right off the bat. And I was the youngest, you know, and racing against adults when I was, you know, 11, 10, 11 years old. And uh, as other people encouraging us, like, man, you know, Matt's got this, you got to pursue this all the way. And so then um, at 13 is when we moved across country to North Carolina and raced kind of locally, but at higher ranks and then progressed up through that. And then I got, um, and speaking of faith, my first opportunity in NASCAR at the top few levels was with Joe Gibbs racing. And a lot of people know Coach Gibbs, you know, uh, multi uh, Super Bowl champion and NASCAR team owner and you know, big man of, uh, you know, man of faith and uh, so then a wonderful family. So that's kind of how I initially got into NASCAR. And that was in uh, 2009 when I was uh, 18 years old, um, getting into, you know, the top few series of NASCAR and now fast forward to 2024 and I'm 33 years old. Wow. The Lord has really blessed you. Like he elevated you. That's amazing. For sure. It's, uh, it would be like, you know, w winning the lottery multiple times in a row is kind of how everything had to be perfectly positioned throughout this entire um, journey for it to play out and for me to be where I'm at today. I couldn't have possibly scripted that, scripted any of it. It was all purely in, in God's hands at his perfectly appointed times throughout the whole process to be where I am. Ooh, he has a big purpose for you. Who all are you able to minister to? Like, how have you brought Jesus to other people? Yeah, so man, uh, the the opportunities are so neat, and, and in our sport too, the cool part is, um, you know, I'd say the demographic is all very faith based. We still have uh, do the uh, prayer, the pre race prayer oh, wow. on pit road, which is you know awesome that NASCAR still you know embraces um, faith and kind of our uh, roots and you know the the sports been kind of you know founded around that. A big time for years so so that i i do get a lot of neat opportunities you know with fans that are so awesome uh, within the industry i get to uh, do appearances at track you know oftentimes so i'll be um you know be outside the racetrack in the fan zones or wherever it may be um and just kind of be you know oftentimes be queued up because there will be you know folks who will know that you know uh, faith and and God is, is very important to me. So they'll kind of cue me up with life related questions. And a lot of times God just opens the door naturally, uh, even if not, and, and get to just, um, you know, share the gospel and share how important, you know, having that, having faith and, and knowing the truth and knowing the objective truth uh, is while we're out there driving, you know, driving race cars and, and getting to share identity, you know, it's very easy um to to live your life and and especially man in racing we're very guilty of it it's easy to put your whole entire identity and being a race car driver and putting all that first but when you kind of put everything second and know your identity and know it's important know glorifying god is what's important focusing on him knowing your identity in christ and and having so much more so much more peace uh knowing that it, it's temporary and, and you have, I have so much more joy now and getting to share that stuff you know with um, fans at the racetrack with the team whether it be in the the race shop it's um, a lot of organic just kind of uh, open doors within the industry and then of course you know in our uh, personal front at, at home um, like next year you know plan to we're having some changes and and you know there's opportunities to do bible studies within uh, the team or team lunches and incorporating bible study that's uh, you know multiple teams do that which is very cool. And then on a personal front, you know, we're blessed. God's put some amazing people into our path that we spend, um, you know, spend a lot of time with as well and, and helping people close to us, help them, you know, grow in their spiritual walk and such. 
Wow, that's incredible. I know that that's how God works. He just needs us to plant seeds. And there's a lot of times in people's careers that they're just afraid. They're afraid to talk about Jesus right now, especially if a TV camera's on them. It's like, oh, nope, we can't say that. But you've been pretty loud with your faith. You've shown people that, you know, you are a believer, that Jesus is in your life. And I think that's that's bold. That's incredible. And that's that's the kind of people that God is raising up because he's saying, hey, I need an army. And it's the ones that can be the vessel. It's the ones that can say, you know what? I'm not scared to say who my Lord is. I'm not scared to say NASCAR is second because God is first. And that's pretty incredible that you've you've been so bold. Man, I, I appreciate that. And praise God, man, it's been, you know, just a, a super cool journey. And, and what I'm, some things I'm really thankful for are, you know, and how you and I got connected as, as my wife and I, um, I've been following you for a while and just saw, you know, what, what God was doing and moving through you. And, and I'm like, man, that's, that, that's the church. That's what, yes. you know, God is wanting to do is, is of course we need our corporate house and everything, but, but I've never been, um, what I'm really thankful for is, man, I, I have an awesome family. I have the best family in the world. We may not have grown up, you know, personally knowing and having that relationship with Jesus. Yes, of course, you know, we believed in God and had faith and everything, but didn't have that personal relationship. And I didn't know, you know, his story. I didn't know the gospel. I didn't know the beginning of the book, uh, the gospel and the victorious ending. I didn't know those things. Um, but what I'm thankful for is, and I'm sure you can relate on this, is, is I had no interest ever in religious stuff or organized religion and yep. just the kind of your stereotypical religious practices you, you go to church on Sundays and go home and mm -hmm. live like the rest of the world Monday through Saturdays and yep. I never had any kind of interest in any of that but it was when I had probably when I had everything when I was making more money than ever I had the stuff I had the cars I mean I'm a car guy I love mm -hmm. cars and and nice things and stuff but when I had all the materialistic stuff that's where it got me to uh, I felt like I was Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway where it's just like <laughs> all right, it's me and life itself and, and I'm gonna figure this thing out and you kind of get in your spiritual bubble of that's where I got to was like man I can win all the races and I can win championships. I can have money. I can, and it's, there's such an empty void here. Mm. You know, my, my soul just feels so empty and it all feels so temporary. And then when you start looking at things like that, then your perspective just pulls out, you know, another, you know, 10,000 feet, then another 10,000 feet. And you just start looking at life through the, you know, through the 30,000 foot, lens um and i'm thankful that i wasn't looking for religion or any of that i was truly seeking objective truth and i needed to know the truth in life and i needed to know um you know that that the things that we want to believe like you know heaven and eternity and yeah i hope there's something better on the other side that wasn't good enough for me i was like all right god I believe you're real, but I need to know a thousand percent. I need to know like factually, objectively, historically, like I'm a factual kind of guy. I was like, I need to know you. And man, his word says, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you'll seek me and find me. You seek me with all of your heart. And I was looking with all my heart one-on-one. -on -one, and I realized that's, you know, that's right where he wants us. That's really actually where he wants us all is, is seeking that personal relationship with him and man, it's like looking for a car, you know, when you start looking, my best reference would be when you start looking for like, man, I really want a, you know, a, a Camaro or something. All of a sudden you just start seeing, seeing them, them everywhere because <laughs> you're looking for them. And yeah. it's the same thing with God. When you look for him, he will, I mean, he's, he's, he's omnipresent and everywhere. And when you mm -hmm. start really looking for him and seeking him and coming to a story, he sure will make himself very well known to you. Oh, that is so good. There's so many people right now that are lost. Like they, they might have all the things like you just said, they might have fame, they might have money, they might have a name, but none of it really matters in the grand scheme of things. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't have Jesus, then you will have that void. Cause you know, we're all created to seek our creator. Like all of us are like, we have this internal, almost like an internal clock, but it's an internal compass. And we're just 
trying to find who created us and until then you're really lost and some people don't even know that but they're really lost until they find Jesus and so I think that's incredible that you found him in your living room that it was after a race and kind of walk me through that what was that story like how did how did Jesus come and radically save you yeah you know we we live in a, a culture especially today, you know, of where everything's about self and gratifying self. And, but I was having conflict with that because I was like, man, I'm the problem here. You know, I'm fighting myself. Yeah. Uh, there's just things like I'm not okay. I need help beyond myself, not me. You know, I'm kind of the problem here. And um, so yeah, it really is just, uh, I was, I, I just, like I said, I kind of had that that emptiness um, i love racing trust me oh man it runs we didn't my, know that yeah my, <laughs> my buddy said it best he said motor oil runs through your blood <laughs> yes there you go <laughs> but um but still even that wasn't uh, wasn't satisfying my soul and so yeah. um so i i started just I, I like to just know the basics and i wasn't afraid to um we have all the tools at hand of course we got the Bible, but we got every tool in the world to know. We got YouTube, mm -hmm. we got the internet. I mean, <laughs> you can come to know whatever you want if you really put your mind and your heart to it. And so kind of in this time, just um, my, my wife and I are, I mean, we're best friends in the world. We've been together since uh, right after high school. We went to high school, middle and high school together. So oh. forever. Yeah. Um, but there's just things we, we weren't on the same page about if you don't you know, have that, that unity and the same belief system and God is your, your father and that headship, you're, you're going to just not be on the same page and everything. Yeah. So there were struggles there. And I was just starting to see struggles within my family, like mental health struggles. My, uh, my dad was just in a, a very bad mental state. And um, there was, there were just so many things that felt on fire. Um, and I felt so empty and so hopeless and so everything just felt pointless and I loved the book of Ecclesiastes because it you know like talks about life's like chasing the wind everything felt meaningless and everything felt like chasing the wind and that was a super low point mentally uh, to get at and then kind of to uh, summarize a little bit here a question that was getting asked to me that was really hard hitting was, you know, people are like, when are you having kids? When are you having kids? And and gosh, I know it sounded so, you know, dark. It was such a, a bad sounding, brutally honest answer. But finally, I just was like, oh, what's the point? And boy, would that catch people off guard when I'd say that. What's the point? And, you know, be like, oh, my gosh, you know, they're the biggest blessing and so amazing. And you get to raise them and, you know, see them grow up and, you know, all the things that, of course, we, we know. But I was like, yeah, but man this may sound a little bit brutal to say but if my you know if my kid comes up to me and they said daddy daddy why do i have to die like our dog died am i gonna die what you know and i give them some answer that's not the absolute objective real truth that i know with all my heart and know with hope like true hope and true confidence um, if i give them some answer that's not like 100% and I know um, then what's the point like if my kid comes to me and asks me the, the real life question life and death yeah. you know light and darkness good and evil why do evil things happen why mm. like I need to know the real answer not mm -hmm. like the fairy tale answer and so those all these things I've said kind of were what led me um, down that path to searching so then we got all the tools at hand I'm like well man and then I start thinking why have I had some sort of, even though I believe in God, why have I had some sort of like hostility toward, toward the Bible and mm. these stigmas that, you know, we have toward religious people and their hypocrites and all the stuff that we all know and hear and church and, and all this stuff. I, I was like, man, why have I let all that noise get in the way of knowing what's the truth and what's not? People are broken. Everybody's messed up who cares? Let me get all that out of the way and let me just look for the truth here. And it's, it's me and God one-on-one. -on -one. Gosh, there's been so much noise I needed to tune out. So I started getting to that place and that was a big step in clearing up so much, you know, giving me so much clarity. Um, and then I started just, man, I wasn't afraid to YouTube the 
dumbest questions <laughs> like you know why did jesus have to die on the cross and then you know it, then it led me to understanding that what made perfect sense to me of of sin is a disease you know we all i'm like oh man that's true why do we every person in the world has this disease but it's like a disease that we all don't want to talk about even though yeah. it's a disease everybody has it's like we're all a, you know a computer with a virus but we don't want the antivirus software yes know? oh wow that's a good analogy <laughs> and so i started just you know coming to understand the gospel and and understanding that um factually historically also, our timeline in which we live in is based on Christ. So I'm mm -hmm. like, man, all these things are right in front of us. How did I not really, you know, give these deeper thought? Um, and then just started, you know, digging into understanding the, the how, like, historically accurate that Jesus truly was born of a virgin, meaning he's, like, uncorrupted, doesn't have the virus that all the rest of us have. He's truly the son of God. He truly lived. He truly died and he truly rose again. It all comes down to the, I want to know is the resurrection. Is this stuff like make believe fairy tale sounds like a good, hopeful story. Is this really true? Cause man, if that's true, like that's the only thing I should be focusing on. And when I came to understand, Oh my goodness, like this is when you start looking into the evidence, like, holy, holy moly, it led me to, okay, I definitely know that, that Jesus really lived, really died, really rose again, really paid the debt. Like, if I go to court and I have speeding fines, cleared and wiped out that debt completely mm -hmm. if I choose him. So I was starting to have the awakening and understanding of that. But also, I'm a competitor. I'm a racer. So then at the same time as having those awakenings, I'm like, well, that definitely means that the devil is real. Darkness is real. Mm -hmm. Spiritual wickedness runs this world. We're in a corrupted world. So the devil is very real, just like God is very real. And I started having an awakening of just understanding, you know, there's a war for my mind and my soul and why I'm like me just trying to even open, open my heart to Jesus and the gospel it felt like World War Three was happening, you know, just in my own personal time. It's just me and nobody else. You know, it was such a battle. So I understand, under, started understanding, you know, that there was just like I'm searching for him. There's also this, you know, fleshly nature and another, you know, force that's trying to pull me away from the truth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so then I, I want to know, you know, my competition. So I started understanding that. And then it's you know, kind of all that led me to just knowing, I didn't know by all means, I didn't know the Bible and God's story cover to cover or anything. I just needed to know if eternal life was true and real and I could know it for 1000%. And anyways, that's kind of what led me to the point where um, I just felt so kind of just, you know, I, I was almost frustrated. I had all this knowledge up here um, but I was almost more frustrated than anything because I was like at this 99% mark. It was like, okay, <laughs> I definitely know now. I know all this is real. I know God is real. Um, but I need to know a thousand percent. And man, all it was was finally that that evening when we had a really bad race. So that bad race was a blessing. We had a terrible race weekend. <laughs> and it was right at the playoffs when we we're trying. We did make the playoffs a couple weeks later. Um, it was, we had a bad weekend. We lost a bunch of points and all this stuff just kind of was on fire at the same time. And I was frustrated. And then in my house at uh, midnight all by myself, I finally just was like, all right, God, I, I surrender completely. My, my life I'm dead to myself. You take over completely, but man, I need to know you. Like I need to know a thousand percent. And I didn't really know about being born again. And I didn't know John chapter three and some of these things, but I knew just enough to be like, Hey, it was just my heart. You know, my heart was in the right place. I was like, take over. I believe in you a hundred percent. And I, I, I accept the gift. I, I just want to live with you forever. Know my soul secure. And, and bam, just in that instant, all it was, was just my heart being in the right place and surrendered with, you know, all my heart and like, like making that decision to marry your spouse. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm yours. I belong to you. And God's spirit just came all over me 
like a, a flood yeah. you know, an outpouring and it was like a light switch was off for 29 years of my life that I didn't know was off and it was like it was flipped on for the first time or like race car terms the ignition was off the engine was off and all of a sudden it was 900 horsepower was cranked up all at once and I had that personal encounter and, and realized that I had been truly saved from you know, living separate from God because eternal separation from God is also real. And that's a choice mm -hmm. that we can make. Wow. Your story almost made me cry. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's one of those that um, I feel like God really does finally get to a point where there's some people that get radically saved. Like they didn't grow up in church. They didn't really know, you know, the organized religion part of things. They've not read the Bible. God comes in and it's just, it's never the same. But those radical encounters like that are just, they're so precious because, you know, we, we are on this road, right? You're on that broad road and you're just living life and you're having fun and you're just going through the motions. And then all of a sudden you're at that fork in the road and you're like, you know what? This narrow path, let's just see what it's about. And, you know, for you to give yourself to the Lord like that, it is, I mean, there's nothing like it, but so many people are too proud. So many people have too much, you know, self-pride and just arrogance, and they can't get down on their knees and say, you know what, I'm I'm ready for something bigger than me. I'm ready for, you know, to give yourself over to the Lord. It's just kind of hard for a lot of people. They don't get to that point. So, um, but then there's always times, like you said, in your life where there's the low points. There's the times where everything's on fire, and you don't have a fire extinguisher, and you're just standing there like, what can I do about this situation? And then you realize, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, someone else is going to have to do it. And then you find that someone else is Jesus. And life is never the same. <laughs> yeah, amen to that, 100%. Your life definitely isn't the same. And that's, you know, oftentimes what um, we, we we like to, our fleshly nature will want to we'll live our way and do things our way and live for ourselves, live for the world and do whatever we want because we know, you know, there's something in us that knows even before you're saved that, man, I know if I make that decision, though, then it's going to bring some sort of different accountability yep. over my life. And, you know, I'm not going to be able to run from the truth or lie to myself or, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be the darkness in you is going to be brought to light. There's going to be a big old flashlight that's shined in there, but it's for your own good. A hundred percent like a good father, you know, a good father teaching this kid, you know, right from wrong and raising them and, and guiding them down the right path. It's, it's absolutely, you know, it is the narrower path. It is the more difficult path. Um, but what also is a good awakening and probably is definitely not talked about enough because everything's so soft, you mm -hmm. know, and to world is the broad path that most most people are on that breaks my heart breaks God's heart yes. but I was on that path and and the reality is is the gospel is so um Americanized I guess you could mm -hmm. say nowadays you know we we kind of dumb everything down and and it's not and and it diminishes the beauty mm -hmm. of the gospel and how amazing you know God's story is and how well alive it is and how true it is but we we miss because we americanize everything that we we all want to talk about of course everyone wants to believe that heaven's real mm -hmm. but we don't want to believe in a god of of justice and, mm -hmm. and truth and that that hell is a very real literal pr place yeah. as well and god wants none to perish absolutely none zero people my heart aches now that i see it through god's lens it aches for it people does. who choose to stay separated from him but um understanding you know the law when i wanted to know objective truth not subjective truth not my truth i wanted to know the truth uh, it brought you know enlightenment to it you know you break the law it'd be like somebody going in you know uh, murdering somebody and then going into jail uh, or going into court and if the judge just said oh it's okay and let them go that'd be a very corrupt judge that'd be bad you know yeah. bad judge mm -hmm. and when i had you know when you have the enlightenment when i had the enlightenment to the law uh, when i had the enlightenment to the understanding of that i'd been when i had when i did get saved that evening i had kind of like it was like every every gear in my brain clicked and i had full understanding that wow i just mm -hmm. i just truly got saved and i realized that i was on this broad path living for myself that's not true love loving yourself and living for mm -hmm. yourself missing 
love the sacrificial love is like loving your spouse more than yourself. And I was missing that and, and realizing that I was on the path, whether I knew it or not, whether I was living blindly to it or not, I was on the path. Um, I was separated from God and that can, that's an internal decision. Yeah. No. And the fear of God, I mean, Proverbs one seven, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge or wisdom, the beginning fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, interpretation of it. Um, but we, in America, we've lost the fear of God and that's that fear yeah. is our friend. It's not our enemy. You know, it's for mm -hmm. our own good to, to run them, run us to him and the knowledge of the law and that we're all, you can't rely on your own good works or anything. We're all broken. We're all sinners. Yeah. We all break the law, you know, and that brings knowledge to the need of a savior, which this world, especially in today's time, clearly needs. Yeah, I agree. It's actually the world today, whenever you look at it and how far we have gotten away from God is actually crazy. And once you're saved and you see it and you look at it and you see the sin around, it's, it's actually baffling. You know, once it's like the Amazing Grace song, you know, I was once blind, but now I see when your eyes are opened and you're looking at it, it's it's just like you said, you wish for no one to perish because that hurts God's heart. Like he wishes for no one to perish. So then it gets us to this this place where we have to ask ourselves, what can I do about it? What can you do about it, Matt? You know, that's how we have to ask ourselves, what can I do about this world and how can I make a difference for the kingdom of God? Not for me, not for myself, but how can I bring others to God and show them that there's there's more, there's a truth that they don't know? You know, when I go to these waters, the people that are coming, they have been lost for so long. They have been wandering. They don't know the truth. Um, and then they stumble on a social media video. This is this is where technology is good, mm -hmm. is that, you know, TikTok and those kind of places, they can be dark. These kids and these young adults nowadays, they have everything in their hand so much sin that can be easily accessible they're just scrolling and they're having a good time and all of a sudden it's just like bam jesus like <laughs> and it just comes in at a good time there's so many people that don't expect it and they don't expect it to come from someone like me and i'm sure that it's the same with you they don't expect this nascar driver who is you know this young man who's just really risen in this career and then they hear you talk about the Lord and it, it can stop people in their tracks and make them think about, hey, if he knows the truth and, you know, he's he's who he is today, like he must know something I don't know. You know, how do you handle it if, you know, people criticize you for your faith? Do you encounter that with your profession? I'm blessed to drive for the coolest team owners in the world. So I do have, you know, freedom to be myself, I feel like, which is why I'm so thankful God put me where I am and and racing for Viking motorsports. And, um, so I have a great team and, but like you said, though, you, you know, um, there's so many things that you do have to look out for and, and that you can ruffle feathers. If you're outspoken, they'll be like, don't bring religious stuff, you know, into this or religion and politics. And, you know, it's, that's kind of the, the viewpoint. I always try and put my, you know, put myself in other people's shoes and be respectful across the board because I'm, I can probably relate very well with Peter in the Bible because I'm like a all in kind of reckless personality. And, and boy, I've, I've said things, uh, you know, we've all, <laughs> we all live and learn. God's taught me a lot about probably walking with a little more balance and, and, you know, thinking before I speak a little bit more. And so where I'm getting out on the NASCAR side is, is I probably was, you know, early on in my faith, I was just like, I'm going to say and do whatever I want and I don't <laughs> care, you know, and then, yeah. and then for a bit that I kind of had some things bite me and I was just learning, you know, learning life all over again. I feel like from a blank slate, I'm absolutely not afraid to share the gospel and talk about Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Yeah. Um, but I think in those maybe times where I have opportunities to plant seeds, but I'm also aware of like, okay, let me do this tactfully. Mm -hmm. God, let's work together and let's plant these seeds mm -hmm. tactfully. And I kind of know where that line is. I think he's helped me. It's kind of a fun, um, fun, like, okay, we're, like you said, we plant seeds. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, we're farmers. So let's plant some seeds yes. here. Where, right, where can we sprinkle these seeds in? And sometimes uh, we can do it just through, you know, the life lens and asking probing mm -hmm. questions and dropping little seeds in there and I you kind of have to know 
um, where your door is open if you're on a national TV or doing something where there's opportunity for a little seed and drop a life seed in there. Yep. Or if I'm uh, at an appearance outside the racetrack and I get asked just straight up boldly about my my faith in God, then I can share it in a more like a outspoken, bold way and just straight go right to the heart of the gospel. So yeah. there's many different ways to to share, uh, but I'm I'm glad that I've probably found a little bit better, uh, less reckless balance in <laughs> in yeah. recent. I understand that we have to have grace. There's some people that some people are ready and they're ready. They've been someone else has planted seeds and you're watering those seeds. And then sometimes you're just planting the seed and sometimes you're harvesting. <laughs> so it really yep. just it depends on where they're at in their own growth phase. It is great to be bold, but it's also going to push people away because religion in a way, a lot of people that are church hurt, they're neglected and they're hurt by church people or they're just hurt by religion in general. And so knowing how to minister to each person that you encounter, like that's where your discernment kicks in. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in and it's no longer you. It is the Lord. He knows that person. He created them. So he's going to know how to handle that situation. So I think that's awesome that you, for one, you don't shy away from it. I mean, if someone asks you, you, you tell them. But it's also not one of those situations where you're shoving it on someone forcefully because we all know that doesn't work. That's what religion tried to do so much is just condemn people and judge people. And, you know, that's not our place. So I think it's cool that you do it with grace. Um, Peter, like you said, you know, I know Peter, he was very aggressive in the beginning, chopping off ears. <laughs> but, you yeah. know, eventually, you know, he ends up actually leveling out. And after Jesus mm -hmm. has risen, you know, you see his demeanor completely change. And he becomes this humble like loving and it's like who's this you know he needs to change yeah. his name one more time <laughs> simon peter <laughs> then who's this guy <laughs> um exactly but that's that's really it's a part of your faith journey so i think it's cool that you've you've went through that too where you've you know kind of grown to where you are now and you can be gentle but yet firm in your faith for sure and and you know too and uh, especially in a, a world today where it seems, you know, it seems so dark and it seems like, you know, things are kind of hopeless and, and all that. It's such an opportunity to bring joy that almost confuses people, you know, yes. like to bring the, there's three words that I feel like God has really laid on me um, a lot to, to spread lately. And it's uh, joy, fun and masculinity. Okay. Um, because, you know, it, like you said, people, I always try and put myself in the, in my old shoes, I guess, like, how would I look at this if I was, you know, before I was a believer mm -hmm. or when I had all these religious stigmas and all this stuff um, that a lot of the, those things were, did hold true. And I understand, yeah. you know, and um, so the, kind of putting myself in, in those old shoes helps bring me some clarity and more grace you know, and, and so when I kind of share with people or plant seeds or whatever, when you do it with joy and not with condemnation, mm -hmm. it's not about them and the other people. It's about, we're supposed to be sharing the good news. It's mm -hmm. the good news of the gospel and how, man, you can be set free and your mind can be renewed. And I mean, I have so much that I could just jump for joy of, of like, man, he's restored to so much in my life. And, and well, you know, killed off much of Matt and brought me a new life in Christ, which is much, much better. But when you share um, the joy and the fun of having a personal walk, walking in spirit, walking in truth, not being in darkness, the joy of, of coming to know the truth and coming to know God's story. Um, and the more joy that you have, um, it's, it's just that spreads that light to other people. And it's neat to see other people, you know, uh, lighten up mm -hmm. um, and kind of spread that light to other people when you're sharing through a lens of joy and not condemnation and truly, you know, God's love covers a multitude of sins. So really yeah. loving other people um, and wanting to see them set free, wanting to see mm -hmm. souls saved and set free and come to the truth, you know, and see freedom over their lives and blessings, you know, we're either speaking blessings or speaking curses over people mm -hmm. and just wanting to bless other people. Another stigma I had before I was a believer was like masculinity or toughness. You know, I, I always thought of like, oh, he's, um, 
church people that's like the the wimpy thing you're just not tough enough to handle it so you're resorting to you know just tr- believing in a fairy tale you know you kind of have those sorts of uh, thoughts but man when you know your identity in christ to know who you are and know that you're a child of god and know you know the gift that you received um it's not about you it's about him when you die to yourself and come to a new life in christ and pick up a new identity um and him and knowing who you truly were created to be man you can walk in what i would call some swagger yeah. and some boldness humbly you know <laughs> but you can walk in absolute confidence and knowing um, darkness has no power over the light mm-hmm. knowing that you can walk in victory i'm i'm a racer i'm a competitor and knowing you can walk in constant 24 7 victory in your life in your days knowing the power um, in your words and what you're speaking over your life the power in the name of jesus christ and like knowing the victory uh, that you can walk in it's um and 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 go into the spiritual gym you know i love going to the gym and lifting weights but going to the spiritual gym and you know, exercising your spiritual muscles and learning his word and, and coming to, you know, it's, it's like, it just fills you more and more with, with truth and that power. And it's, it's so beautiful what it, um, what he can work through your life if you let him. Yeah. You know, you speak, you know, Jesus spoke in parables a lot and you have like a lot of parables, like analogies and, and that you, and I love them. Like they're really good. That's cool. I don't know if you realized and picked up that you do that or if anyone's ever told you, but you definitely do do take after Jesus in that way in the parables. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think the uh, I think with uh, racing's always going through my mind 24 seven. So I always end up having some kind of a racing analogy or oh. I love, you know, working out and training and stuff. So those kind of come natural. But I, I it is cool. And I, you know, you start really studying and knowing. Yes. The character of Jesus, mm. um, and and I started realizing, man, he really, even though he knows everything, he asks a lot of questions, yeah. and <laughs> he speaks in a lot of parables, which makes it, you know, kind of worldly references and gives mm-hmm. kind of easy understanding to things. And I really loved coming to to know that and study that, and it ha- actually helped me in life to start asking more questions and asking people questions and knowing the power and just straight humbly asking people questions even if you know the answer you're just trying to probe you know their thoughts and their mind or or whatever and and then coming to know you know his character is not the jesus that i had in my mind before Mm. i came to know him personally you know i had this um i don't know a better way to to put this but i had this wimpy jesus in my mind yeah you know like an american Yeah. yeah i had that and then when you come to know the real Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and and also when you read Matthew 23 and John chapter eight, some very powerful chapters where he, for lack of a better way to put it, ripped the religious people. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Pharisees Um, definitely got chewed. (laughs) Yep. And they, you know, because they were leading people astray and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you realize like Jesus is is love he is the fullness you know of god manifest in human form he is mm-hmm. he is his god in human form um but he wasn't always necessarily a nice guy he's he's yeah. the truth he is the um, truth just like loving your kids is mm-hmm. telling them the truth you know my dad always told me one thing that i really appreciated i appreciate now more than ever he said i'm not your best friend i'm your father oh yes and, and i and now growing up and, and admittedly being like dang my dad was right about my <laughs> stuff you know um that that's you know when i came to understand who who christ was uh, or who, who christ truly is and i mean walk this earth um understanding his character is is a whole lot different than what the world would portray mm, that is so true it's so true. Okay, so I have to ask you, uh, I know that you've been so busy, but when are you going to join me in the water? <laughs> oh, yes. my. Uh, so when you're in Forest City. Yes, um, you're, you're racing. October. Yeah, I'm racing in uh, Talladega. Oh, that's um, a big one, huh? So, yeah, so we're racing Talladega that, uh, that Saturday. But uh, my wife and my personal trainer, James, were actually, we were just talking about that this morning because James was... He's so excited to come to that event, and Tay is so excited to come to come there. Um, but 
Yeah, we've been brainstorming some ideas back and forth a little bit. And man, I would love to experience being in the water yeah. uh, with you, know, baptizing people and seeing the, you know, the transformation. And, and I love just seeing, I know you see it so much, um, the hungriness oh, of yes. people. Uh, I just watched the movie Jesus Revolution last night, yes. actually, again. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and we were bored and we were like, oh, let's watch that again. And, yes, I love and, that. Uh, there's a lot of that from that time, which is based on a true mm -hmm. story that we see nowadays, which yeah. is people are hungry for truth. They're uh -huh. not, the young generation is a blessing because uh, they're they're hungry for the supernatural, for the truth, mm -hmm. not for religious practices. They, they want to, you know, the world's hungry. Yes, they um, are. And I believe that there's going to continue to be a tremendous amount of mass awakening so i it can't yep. wait to be in the water uh, with you and make the schedules align and if we line it up with a, a race weekend a day early or something man with I, in the nascar community is full of a lot of very hungry very open uh people i i don't encounter hardly any uh, race fans and people in our world that um are not open to the gospel and talking about faith in god that's amazing it really is I don't know if you knew this, but I grew up in North Carolina. So my first um, baptism event, it was in North Carolina. And I didn't know if one person would show up or if five would. I definitely didn't expect what did. But, you know, at this point, I was very early. I had been a Bible teacher for maybe a year. And that's all I did. I just did these online lessons. So then the first person who asked me to baptize her was Rose. She's a UFC fighter. She's now my best friend, but uh, she's the first person that kicked off this podcast. And um, so she, you know, asked me to baptize her. And when she did, she drove 17 hours to my house and I baptized her. And when I did, you know, it's kind of like the story you told about when you get got radically saved. My feet hit the water and the Holy Spirit took over. And I was just just empowered with this spiritual authority that I never knew. And so I started doing the baptism events, and the first one I ever did was in North Carolina, in Forest City. So when I got there, um, you, you sparked this, whatever you said, Jesus Revolution, because I was in the water, and again, I brought nothing. I had no idea. It was like the parable where Jesus, actually, this wasn't a parable. This was him directly telling his disciples. He said, go and take nothing with you. He said, don't take, you know, extra clothes. Don't take an extra staff go and so he sent the disciples out two by two with nothing and I think that lesson hit me so hard because I came there to North Carolina I slept in a tent and I had nothing but my Bible and I literally just showed up how God wanted me to and when I was there I'm like okay Lord this is yours like this isn't mine this is this is yours just let me be the vessel let me be the hands and feet and so when I walked in the water there in North Carolina I looked up like I had baptized maybe four people and um, at that point I'm like oh thank you Jesus for bringing four people I looked up and it was like the Jesus Revolution movie they were coming down the hill in groves and I was just like <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and then obviously I'm like well can I do this like the, is this you know so I slipped in my flesh a little bit just in for a moment of of can I do this I don't work out like I'm tiny <laughs> And, you know, just looking at the overwhelming presence. And then the Lord just said, yes, I will sustain you. I will give you power. And he did. I planted my feet and I did not leave that water until I baptized 54 people that day. Oh, man. The first event I had ever had, I literally expected one to five people. Like I did not expect what happened. And so when that happened, we had just watched the Jesus Revolution movie. It had just come out like not long before that event. And I just thought, this is it. This is the movement that God has been trying to put on us. And there's so many people that can't humble themselves to be the vessel and, and listen to the Father whenever he says go. And, you know, for me, it was without a doubt. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, I had no questions. I had no, I just took my Bible and there I went. Um, but when I left there, I could barely walk. <laughs> I obviously oh, I had not prepared for the amount of physical drainage. Um, but from that event, if, if I could just show you, I have testimonies from so many of those 54 people of their lives changing forever. I mean, healings, deliverance, people that had been in bondage their whole lives, 
things that you would really not believe until you heard it from that person's mouth. And so from there, it was just, how can I do this more? Like, how can I go out? And, and so I just started telling the Lord, I'm like, send me just like in Isaiah, send me here am I. And, and he did. And so that's how I got started. It was there where you live, kind of. It's about, I guess, an hour from you, probably. Yeah. And so that's yeah. why I'm coming back there is because this is full circle. And it's one year anniversary of the first time I started doing this. And within one year, I have baptized close to 2,000 people. Oh, and, my goodness. That is so yeah. cool. But it all Gosh, started what there. A, what a journey has probably been in a whirlwind, I bet. <laughs> it has been wild. It has been wild, but all beautiful. And just, like I said, those testimonies and the people and their their faces shining with the glory of God coming out of the water. It's like, how could you not want this more? How could you not surrender your life and just say, all right, here we go, you know? Yeah. And when, when did you... Um get saved or how long have you, oh yeah you know. yeah you want my testimony that's awesome <laughs> um so i grew up in church um and it was it was one of those religions exactly like we talked about where you go and it is a, almost a performance um just like this tradition you slip in where you go to church and then the rest of the week you're whoever you want to be and so i grew up you know seeing that and like all the people in the church and you know like the deacons and the people that were supposed to be good were bad and there was so much religion and it just you know i have two sisters so there's three three girls and you know myself and my sisters we all went different ways to the point where we didn't know what to believe we didn't know who to believe we didn't know jesus as our personal savior we just kind of knew that you know religion was an organized thing we didn't really want to be a part of and so we all strayed away I started going to church again, you know, just with my little family. I was wanting my kids to be raised in church, but I still didn't know Jesus. I only knew of Jesus. And it's so, so different when you know of Jesus because of religion rather than knowing Jesus as a personal Savior. And so I can say I got saved when I was eight years old, but did I? Because I recited the words, you know, did I because I got baptized at that, that age? I don't know, because when I found Jesus, it was completely different. It was a girl at my church who, who really hurt me. She was she stole from me, and it was awful. Um, and I couldn't understand why such a hypocrite would be in the church, right? It was one of those things. Um, but I found myself at an altar of prayer, and I bawled. And I had given up on life. I was very sick at the time. I was actually dying um, of malnutrition. And I had so much hate in my heart. And that little bit of unforgiveness was like the icing on the cake. It was just, I had hatred. I had unforgiveness. I had sickness. I literally had everything that would tie you down and not want you to live. And so I gave it all to God. And I stood up from that altar. And he gave me the loudest word. And it was forgiveness. And I didn't understand it for a moment. And then I spun around. And the girl that hurt me really bad was standing right there. And so I looked right at her, and without without a hesitation, I said, I forgive you. And I hugged her, and she broke down and cried, and she said, I've never stolen anything in my life. I don't know why I did that to you. And then it clicked. It was like the Lord showed me in that moment. It wasn't him. It wasn't him that had put me in the hole. It wasn't him that made her act in violence against me. It was the devil. It was literally darker forces. And so my eyes were open spiritually in that moment. And I knew Jesus. I saw the most bright light just filled me. And when I got home, I picked up that old dusty Bible that I had never really read. I mean, I had a Bible in my house my whole life, but I had never read it. And so I picked it up and the Lord said, Matthew. And I got to know Jesus. And the more I studied, the more things I changed in my life, the more I changed everything. I changed the way I dressed. I think changed the way I talked. I changed everything as I went through this sanctification process of getting as close as I could to Jesus. And about halfway through that process, he started telling me to teach. And so, you know, I'm like, are you sure, you know, uh, me, you know? And um, I, I definitely, you know, had the moments of not feeling worthy, not feeling like I could do this, um, but I was obedient. At this point, I had surrendered my whole life. He started healing me of diseases that people couldn't fix. He healed so many things in my body. And so as I would give him 
everything of myself. He would take it and make it better. And so when I started working for the Lord, that's where all of that started is, you know, my spiritual growth. He was rewarding me. He was showing me, you know, I'm going to sustain you. I will raise you up and I will put you where you need to be. I got ordained, even though God gave me the job. I had been on this journey for a year and then I met Rose. He asked me without hesitation to be, you know, to baptize her. And it was another moment of, can I do this? Should I do this? Am I equipped? I know this is really long, but... I could go. No, I love hearing it. <laughs> so, um, so we were driving back from Kentucky, where I live now, to North Carolina, and there's that big river along 40, and I looked at it, and out loud I said, one day I'm going to baptize nations in the river. And like, first of all, I don't speak King James, so I don't say nations. Like, I just don't say that, you know, in a normal conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and after I said it, I literally, like, put my hand over my mouth, and I'm like, I don't know where that came from. And like, my kids are looking at me like I am lost. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. Um, but then it was very comical because it was only a month later when Rose asked me to baptize her. So everything fell into place as God showed me who he needed me to be, not who I thought I would ever be, who he needed in that moment. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready. You equip me. I know that you will. And here I go. Man, that is so cool. It's, it's, and it, it's crazy, and you want to share with everybody how um, your walk with them when you let them guide you and let them lead you and trust in them completely and build that relationship, just mm -hmm. like building your relationship with your spouse, yeah. you know, truly building that relationship, how supernatural mm -hmm. everything is and how it becomes. Yeah. Everything becomes so supernatural, not what the stigma would be a boring religious stuff. It's like, wow. And you like really walk with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy it's different. how not natural every area of your life uh, becomes walking, you know, walking in the spirit, seeing in the spirit. Yes. Uh, it's yeah. And, and knowing, you know, it, do it doesn't mean it's the easier path by any stretch mm -hmm. of imagination. You also get a big spiritual target on your back because exactly. you chose to change teams. <laughs> you, know? yep. uh, you left the world. Uh, but gosh, um, it's, it is, it's crazy and neat how he becomes your guide, uh, through everything and knowing, um, there's one thing that I, for anybody that's, you know, listening, I always try and drop and say of a, you know, that's encouraging and maybe something so simple, but it's so helpful, um, in, you know, your walk and in your life is one knowing when you read his word, knowing how really imperfect of people he used <laughs> like, exactly even people you think of like in your mind like oh king david and all these people oh they were so uh, wonderful and perfect and you start reading you're like oh wow man and jonah you know, fishermen like, and wow. stuff yeah man he used some messed up people yeah. all right we're good and it allows you to walk in more grace you know yeah. toward yourself but, you know, a lot of people say we have a soul you know or a body with a soul but when you know that you are a soul mm. um body it changes your whole complete identity and then you're able to walk through the temporary world with an eternal mindset uh, but my flesh is still there still living in this you know temporary body but that's something i try and you know really remind myself of on a daily basis is knowing okay we are, are a soul and don't let the enemy rob you yes. of your identity because the second that your identity starts being robbed then you start you know I mean, it's, it's so easy. We're all human still, you know, it's so easy to start questioning things, mm -hmm. questioning, should I be doing this? Can I be doing this? Mm -hmm. Oh man, can you really be using me for this? I don't really feel qualified for this. Well, he, well, he qualifies the unqualified. So he it's does. All good. <laughs> he does. I say that all the time too. It's very true. It's very true. Yeah. He doesn't call the qualified. Yep. He qualifies the called. He does. Yep. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing your kind of your testimony and, and getting to know your story a little bit better. That's, that's so neat. Yeah. It's, it's been a long journey, but it's, it's exciting. I give my whole life now in sacrifice because if I can go and help someone else find Jesus, like why would I do anything else? You know, obviously, like you said, with the spiritual warfare, it, it puts a red bullseye right on me because I am, you know, really working in the spirit. And when you're changing the spiritual realm and you're snatching people from the gates of hell, the enemy's going to be upset, but it's still one of those things where you know you have spiritual authority, that Jesus Christ wins. It's not me. None of this is me, what I'm doing. I'm just the vessel. That's it. 
and you know making yourself the vessel like that and just being humble enough to realize it's not my work and it's not even my will because no one no one has the will to go out there and work all day and just deplete yourself in every aspect that you can think of but it is his will not my will be done and so that's what keeps me keeps me going that's what keeps the next one planned and um i think it's going to be really amazing there in north carolina it's going to be and i wish you could be there but your better half will be there <laughs> and yep, she'll exactly yeah and she'll definitely she'll be able to take videos and just kind of show you as well but i can't wait for the day that you join me because i'm telling you that water it is incredible there there are 60 percent of the people that come to these revivals have not even been saved yet 60 percent so that is yeah. a a large amount of people that just heard about jesus on a video don't even know how to be saved and they come to these events and so we have now we have a whole team we have a salvation team we have a pastor that preaches we have you know a worship team that sings so it's a true revival and now like it's just it's everything that god raised it up to be and i'm i'm so excited for you to experience it one day and just be a part of it and you know helping to baptize people and just bring them into a newness of life is it's just like newborn babies coming out of there, like <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's our our spiritual birth and our birth into mm -hmm. our uh, into our home, our new home forever, and being adopted into God's family. Mm -hmm. It's so cool getting it, it. It's like when you're when you're focused more on giving back to others and doing God's will and letting Him take over and dying to yourself. It's man, there's so much joy in just seeing other mm -hmm. people. It saved is. and brought to, brought to life, literally, passing from death to life in an instant. Cannot wait for you to be in that water. I know that our schedules, because usually, so I didn't know you raced on Saturdays. I was thinking racing was on Sundays. And to tell you the truth, I've not watched racing since I was like a little girl. And my, my grandpa would watch it, so I would sit down and watch it. But I haven't watched it since. And so I'm definitely like, I'm going to start watching you because I like to support those who you know, who are my friends, but it's still one of those things where I don't, I don't really watch TV and I'm consumed with, you know, obviously I do my own work. So I, I record my own videos and I put them up and I have a lot tied into my ministry, but I still like your next, your next race, I'm going to catch it and I'm going to watch it. Nah, we're definitely going to work on uh, my schedule and, and I definitely would love to, I'd be honored to be uh, in the water with you as well and we can't wait to uh i'm jealous that day is going to get to attend uh, the four city event and i won't be there but i'm thankful that she gets to go and i know she's excited and yeah. and uh, man we're definitely going to make it happen and and i look forward to seeing you know um I, on a grander scale just what uh god has in store for the future i know he's working you know such big things through you and your ministry and what you're doing and that's you know like what my we me tay my wife and and our friend James were talking about is like, that's the church. That's where God's moving. He's yeah. looking for the hungry souls and out in the field and baptizing the nation. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I look forward to seeing, you know, where, he, where he's crossed our paths yeah. as well. How, how racing and your ministry and all can mm -hmm. come together. Luckily, we don't have to know all the answers, but God does. And it's he cool does. to know trust in his plan and whatever he's got in store for uh, through us. We're, we're game for because he's the boss. We just work for him. Amen. You're the word that you got that that blasted out of your mouth of baptizing the nations is, yeah. is what's going to happen. It is. And man, I'm you know, and I love to uh, love to you know share and push on my social media or any way that we yeah. can uh, we can help just to uh, you know spread spread the gospel and lead souls to the truth and in any way that we can help what God's moving through. Through you, you and your ministry, we, we're just uh, we're just big fans. Love love seeing, lo just love seeing God moving in the ways that uh, when you read the Bible, uh, you, you see that's that's how that's how it was done out in the field, yes. Yes. planting those seeds and being out there working and reaching the lost. That's uh, that's <laughs> yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. Yes, we are the church. We are. Yep, exactly. The church isn't a building. It's, it's our body's the house. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Matt, thank you so much for being on this podcast today. I really thank you for all the conversation we had. I felt like it was definitely Holy Spirit inspired. I just thank you for taking time to be on this podcast and chatting with me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on.